Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman. And today, oh, we're in London. Just walking down, just hanging out in London. I've got Catherine here. We are going to do a bit of a Mando review. We're going to see how this goes. But uh, what are we doing right now, Catherine? We're about to walk into the XL Centre. Yay! Hang on a second. Celebration isn't on yet. Because <laughs> well, I'm a day early. Of course I've got to be. I've got to get the badge in my hand. Yeah, so we had a little bit of time to kill before we go to the pub later on. And uh, so we decided to just do a dry run down <laughs> from Hackney. We've got our Airbnb sorted. And uh, yeah, now we're just walking down to the XL Centre to get our passes. Um, from all reports, everybody who's done this already, that's been pretty smooth. Oh, please don't jinx it. Please. Please. <laughs> it's actually pretty busy. <laughs> But there's actually quite a fair, fair few people sort of kicking around. Um, I kind of thought it would be absolutely dead, but here we are. Uh, yep, queuing. But it is London, so you queue for stuff. That's how it's done. Um, all right, well, let's get this sorted out. We thought we'd just record this little moment here. God, there's actually some people look like they're even in costume, which is all a little bit weird. But um, all right, we'll work it out. Okay, we're walking the hall here. We've just picked up our passes and uh, we've got them in a hot little hand. What are your first impressions of the XL so far, Catherine? It's huge. It's humongous. But well laid out, like lots of amenities, as in like food. Yep. Without having to leave the centre. It's looking pretty nice so far. Yeah, it certainly is. We went up to the wheel call bin and there was just like this aircraft hangar of empty space where it looks like they're going to make people queue up tomorrow to get in. Yeah, that's looking very cattle pen yuck. So I think that's where you'll be if you get here at 8 trying to get in at 10 or if you think you can try and get into one of those panels that are already full. Uh, and I guess that's where they made everybody stay overnight back in the day when they did overnight. Yeah, nah, that's... Like, my bed was hard last night, but... Yeah, I'm not just doing concrete. That was like the most depressing place you'd want to be up all night, really, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's the definition of depressing. Concrete floors, grey walls, grey ceiling, just huge nothingness. <laughs> Staring into the void. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so we got the passes. It was very efficient. Like, you know, it wasn't, there's people around, but it's not like it's shocker blockers, but I'm glad we did it today. Um, bonus, we got to pick up Turbo's passes for him as well, so we didn't have to come all the way out with his family's passes. They were very cool. They're just like, yep, if you've got his ID, pop up his ID, and you've got his QR code, away you go. So, Ooh, all the Turbos. Saved him a trip. Pluro Turbos. Very Turbo. Turbo <laughs> to the max. Yeah, I don't know what, a, what the pool of Turbos, a group of Turbos is, but uh, <laughs> we'll find out. So, we're, um, yeah, we're basically just making our way back to the train now. We've still got to talk about that Mando episode. I think what we might do is get home, get to the pub, and then get a beer, and then I think we'll have a chat about it. And then when there's a bit less pressure, because I'm like, oh, maybe I can get something out really quick. I'm like, ah, oh, who cares? Let's just get it out later on. It doesn't really matter. But nice to get this out of the way. So this will just be the little precursor to the Mando review, I'd say, and as we lead into the celebration stuff anyway. So uh, see you on the other side. I'm one day closer. Oh, actually, before we go any further, sorry, we should talk about all the banners. <gasps> My man! There was like a giant Cassian Andor banner on the entrance on the way through, so Catherine was pretty excited. I think she's going to try and steal that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be like my whole house, just covered in, in Andor. Worth it. I don't know where you'd put his face, but we won't discuss that. <laughs> Don't, don't answer that. Go, go. <laughs> Wait till she has a few, uh, she gets a few shandies in her and then we'll figure it out. Okay. What do you want for me? What do you want for nothing? You get nothing, sir. Good day. Hello there. Uh, hello there. Hi. Uh, so, we're in London. Jeez, we are. We're at the beautiful Spurstow Arms in Hackney, the old local pub. Great recommendation, by the way. Have you been here before? Dude. Yeah, this is my here. local pub. This is like the last pub I came to. Before I left the country, before I moved back to Australia. No way. Tell you what, the cheese and onion on toast, $8 special. 
Do it's well. Who is this mystery voice that we're talking to right here? State your name. Uh, state my name for the record. Jimmy Andy Dice. Uh, no, just Jimmy Dice from the Scruffy Looking Podcast. No relation to Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> no, 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 no. As we've no. established last time. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, having a good time? Oh, fantastic yeah, time. Celebration yeah. hasn't even started yet, but it has here tonight at the Spurstone Sta- Spur- 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 Arms. Stone Arms. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, having a great time. We, uh, Ed, uh, Eddie B and I, we flew in this morning, landed at 6.30 a.m., met up with Turbo, uh, went around the city today, saw the sights. We uh, met with Christopher and Kev and Emily back in the hotel. Uh, we're meeting with you fine people. I've got my excellent Star Wars spelled out beanie right now. Yeah, nice to offload repping, most of the beanies tonight. Re- re- yep, yeah, repping, repping the merch. Uh, that is paid for. You have received my receipt on this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. why you're on the podcast. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it's only people who paid. It's, it's no, a pay to play. No deadbeats. Yeah, yeah. Pay, yeah. Pay, pay to play here. Sure, sure, sure. Um, no, absolutely fantastic time. And tomorrow is just the start of whatever is going to happen. So we're going to talk about this Mandalorian episode. This is officially this episode of the podcast. The Celebration Blog Cods will start tomorrow. So when Celebration starts, we'll talk Hurt. about all the fun things we're doing. Hurt. But Hurt. this is a, this is, is technically the, the Mandalorian review episodes. Okay. Okay. So did you watch the episode of the Mandalorian? <laughs> uh, I watched it half in my truck while I was dropping my kid off to daycare. Don't tell anybody. Um, but finished it in my truck on my phone in my driveway because I was flying out later that morning. Okay. So you, di- you didn't come off a like a you know 15 hour flight and then watch it like I did I thought I was having some kind of insane fever dream of what I was watching <laughs> I, I watched it stone cold sober slightly <laughs> What the hell did you? What the hell was that episode? Well, what do you mean? We got we got a cool new planet with some very interesting people on Jack Black. I was he did he did he did okay. Rick a goo goo, Rick a goo goo. I did all right. Lizzo, Lizzo was a surprise. I, I, I did well, not expect that. Kat, I, uh, like has got tickets to see Lizzo, and we got to the hotel, oh, and she was having a shower, and I yelled, "I'm like, Lizzo's in Star Wars." She's like, "What?" This is outrageous. She's hugging Baby Yoda. Have a look. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. She knighted Baby Yoda. Right? Because she knighted him. She knighted him. And he's just like, cool, I got my people here. You know, he'll, he'll be back. He'll Are be you back. familiar with the Tenacious D album, like the first one at all? <sighs> no, I should be. I okay, should well, I've got to find someone who is. I'm not going to waste this joke. That's going to be Christopher. That's going to be Christopher for right. sure. Chris Hall. Oh, okay. uh, speaking of Christopher, Christopher Lloyd, what did you think about his special appearance? Well, I'd heard that he was in it. And it was really weird because I was watching it, and I've gone, oh, the Christopher Lloyd's in it. Oh, great. And then I, but, but then I was like, oh, that's all they did with him? Like, he was kind of just like, oh, the droids are very problematic. And then at least they brought it. It was like Scooby-Doo. They brought him. It was like an episode of CSI or something. Like, they brought him back at the end. Brought, like, you're was like the, the culprit. guy who yeah, moved the boxes, and it turns out he was the guy who killed the girl in the park at the end. Yep. Yep. He had, he had For what the reason, I can't quite remember. Oh, no. He's a big Count Dooku fan. You know, who is it? He's got the curved lightsaber, Christopher oh, Lee. Yeah, that was a whole. That was a little he bit. He was weird. a Dooku fanboy. It's he a damn shame like, they cut his fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> so quick, so quick, and so artless. I thought that Christopher Lloyd's exit after they like sentenced him to you know whatever moon he's gonna go to yeah, for yeah. whatever. He just like just walked off, disappeared. I know he had a couple droids behind him, but that was just kind of weird. Well, I guess two two huts and a cut. Not bad for me. Uh, right, right. He's, he seems to be okay with that, but he's looking pretty old, Christopher Lloyd, isn't he? Like I know. Yeah, we were. I mean, he's been looking old since 1985. Well, man. Isn't he? Like I, like, he must be in his. He must be in his 80s by now. Yeah, he's definitely up there. I mean, I only know him from this. Well, now this. Back to the Future and Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Adam's family, I always like. Yeah, uh, Adam family. Yep, yep. He he did okay. It was interesting. It was cool. I, I, it was this was an episode. I didn't love the episode. It was a bottle Actually, episode. Here we go. Chris is right here. I can ask. Hey, Chris, hey, Chris you take, you like do you know Tenacious D? Yeah. Do you know the first record very well? Oh yeah, oh, we'll get to that. Not We're just talking well. about the Mando episode. There's know, like a song on I the Tenacious D album. Like it's like. City Hall, and there's the whole bit where Jack Black's like, "We're leaders to kings, we're rulers to kings." Every time, like the previous episodes of Mando, where it's Bo-Katan and yeah. Mando, I kept thinking of that thing like, "We're leaders to kings, <laughs> I'll be the king, and you know, you could be the duke." And I was like, "Oh, that's very like Jack Black." And then like Jack Black was like in the episode. Like, did you think you were going insane when you watched it? Did you watch it? Oh, am I on? Yeah, you're oh, on yeah, the podcast. Yeah. Have you not watched it? You're, 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 you're hot. You're hot. You're hot. What do you mean? What do you mean, Jack Black's in Mando? Have you not watched a new episode yet? No. 
Don't tell him. Oh it's fuck, I just ruined it for you. <laughs> I made this whole Jack Black. Jack Black's in Mando. He's in the new no, episode. He's not. No, he's not. No, we watched it last night, yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, you thought, I thought I would remember this. We probably did see it. Yeah, so Kevin Emily came to my house and we watched it all together. Did you think you were going insane? And I shouted out loud, fuck, it's Jack Black. And Emily's like, no, it's not. And then Kevin was like, that's Lizzo. And we were just, and then the next scene, it's like Christopher Lloyd. We're like, what? <laughs> What's going on? What is this? Yeah. What, yeah. what, what was this? And, uh, and then the like, the Romeo and Juliet, the Mon Cal and the Quarren at the Not about, no. I, I really no. liked how his tentacles touched him. Yeah. That was cool. That was like, but can they that, kiss? Does that, how does that work? I mean, like, all, all love is love is universal. Yeah. Love is blind. Biologically, baby. how's that, like, I don't know. pretty close enough I mean, I mean, we, we, saw, we saw a preview of that with the kiss, you know what I mean? We can only imagine that's how it works other places. Well, when, as soon as Mundo said, um, you had me at Battle Droids. I checked out. That kind was of a lay line. That was yeah. enough for me. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. I, I just, I think of it as just, it's a bottled episode. Didn't do much except, except it explained how she gets the dark saber back. And then we threw that theory around weeks ago. Remember? Yeah. We, like, why didn't it come up weeks ago? And now it's did like, we talk about this, or did we, we talk about have. this? I think I we think might have. We may have. I'm like, why would it be the first thing that she said? Yeah. Unless she was just too polite to bring it up, but she's been like jonesing for that dark saber for forever. She has, but she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to seem like uh, you know, just a greedy Emily, little come whatever. Over here. I really need to get your opinion. This is the deep opinion. Oh, this is the only opinion that counts. This last episode of the Mandalorian. Oh, total dog shit. Were you in? Like, feel like you're in some kind of weird fever dream, and like what was going on? I, the weird. Romeo and Juliet. Fish, at the Romeo and Juliet start. I'm the- sure you would have been like, "Oh, isn't love beautiful? Look at the love that they're showing." Yeah, but nobody died. That was you missed a cosplay opportunity for celebration, you and Cam. If you had a few more weeks, you got to could have been the Quarren and the Mon Cal. Oh, and there you go. That would have been perfect. No, I I thought I had stumbled into a Doctor Who episode somehow. That's mostly what it felt like to me. It was the most. It must have been really expensive, but looks cheap. Episode of Star of the Star Wars thing. I I don't understand quite how it looked so terrible, but it did. Also, as much as I love him in other things, Jack Black should not be in Star Wars. Oh, Rigagoo, I'm in Star Wars. Oh my god. And and no. It also feels like a waste. Of, well, like now he's in Star Wars and he did that, like. They could have actually done something really good with him at one stage. Yeah. Somehow. Uh, and, you know, he's the kind of guy you need to shape and work into a role and give him parameters and he can be really good. But, but he was just like, like, go, go for it, Jack. Yeah, Jack go crazy. Be Jack. But somehow they achieved the impossible and made me not enjoy seeing Christopher Lloyd, which Great I didn't. I, I was so excited when he was announced. And then he was in this episode and was kind of terrible, and it broke my heart. It's just kind of old. We're just saying it was like an episode of CSI. He was the guy stacking the boxes yeah. halfway through the episode, and then it turns out that he murdered the girl in the park at the end. Uh, and also, I just couldn't like not. I couldn't care about the girl in the park being murdered because it was just I, like a couple of robots went yeah. crazy. Yeah, I don't. I can't. This is what the sixth episode of this season, and it just like feels three like, more to go. Well, three more to go, and we're like. I, I mean, at some point, I would really be happy if there were a plot to this season, but I feel, and I also think that it feels like you can tell a lot of this season was plotted out, thinking Baby Yoda wouldn't be in it because he just doesn't have anything to do except make baby noises and jump yeah. across the screen. And they still found a way to make him luggage to just be like, well, we'll just put him over there while yeah. we do the adventure. Which I kind of thought, well, they'll stop doing that now that they've made all the effort to bring him back. But if he'd been away, at least that would have been a tangible thing going on in the background. Yeah, you could you could be having, you could do this whole season exactly the same, have Mando on these adventures on his own and cut it with, with little flashes of him. Looking up at the same star at some yeah. time or something. Yeah, yeah. Falcon. Sorry, I, just I, I thought I was going crazy. Like, we'd been on a plane for 24 hours. You know, we'd arrived in London in the morning. I was just watching it. Like, we got back to the hotel. And, like, Kat was having a show. I'm just sitting on the bed and I was just watching it. And, like, three or four times I stopped it and was just like, I'm just going to stop it and put the iPad down for a second and have a think about, like, what I'm watching here. Well, it was great because we went over to, to Chris Hall's to watch it. And we sit down and 
Curtis is really excited to have me there being really angry. Oh, this is and, just paying for itself. This is just and everything I, I dreamed of. I think he ended up hating it even more than I did. So it was it was great. He thought I was just going to be... He, I believe his words were, I can't wait to watch Star Wars with the most negative Star Wars fan I know. <laughs> like, well, the joke's on me because now I am the most negative Star Wars fan I know. It's kind of hilarious coming coming up. Like We're going to be at Celebration tomorrow. And I always feel like it's like an icebreaker to just be like, hello, stranger, it's in a line for something. So if that's a Mandalorian episode, huh? Woo, okay. Yeah, wouldn't it be really cool to have like... A, a super exciting episode to talk about. And I like Bryce Dallas Howard too, but I don't know what BDH is doing here. I don't know what. I don't know what she could have done with that script. Well, I didn't know who directed it. And I got to the end and I was like, who is this going to be? And I was like, is this Filoni? I'm like, nah, there's no Filoni character, so yeah. it's not going to be Filoni. <laughs> but I, 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 I had no idea that it was BDH. I was just like, oh no, Bryce, what are you doing? Like, you've got a pretty good track record, mate. But yeah, like she just, well, I guess a job is a job is a job. Uh, yeah, there's only so much you can do when your script opens with a mon cow, mar, whatever that other species is. That is that guy, Axe Woves, the least charismatic character in the history of Star Wars. I mean, he's pretty close. Ha- like, I know there's that High Republic character that's just like a rock. <laughs> Oh, Geode's way better. Is he? Is he, is he gonna, I haven't read the book. So Geode's incredible. Geode is one of the best Star Wars characters. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, no, okay. Geode's great. Okay, good, good. Um, all right, Emily, what are you looking forward to for celebration tomorrow? Uh, the big <laughs> studio panels tomorrow. We're in overflow for that. I might need to report to you and you can tell me what you yeah. saw because I'm not going to see it. I'm really excited for them to announce something that will get cancelled in six months. Well, I think there's a good chance Taika Waititi is going to be there because he was in Paris the last few days. So. Yeah, I, the, he'll probably come out. I, I mean, they've Hi, got... it's great to be here. Something will come out sometime, hey? They, look, at my little, yeah. look at my little shorts. <laughs> they got to announce what the next movie is and then maybe it'll be the next movie. But when they announce it, I'll be really excited. You know, I'll woo now, and I'll save my criticisms for later. Thank yeah, you. exactly. Beautiful. Thank you, mate. Talk to you later. You can get used to this. You're going to get a lot of this. The next oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What is that? A oh. piece of tr- string. Oh, I've got a sprig on me. Oh, my God. All right. I'm going to go around to these boys. All right. You guys are on the podcast. Every podcast fan's dream. He doesn't know. He's there. Kev, Kev. Good afternoon, sir. Now, Good evening. I know you've been having an amazing couple of days. Your girlfriend come over. Mate, I've had more than a couple of days, mate. We've had like a fucking week. Well, it's been amazing, even better. It's been amazing. Even better. Um, Mandalorian last night. Do I have to talk about is that a, is that Has that killed your buzz? Or have you just embraced... Now, mate. that was quite a romantic, romantic start to that. Were you just like, oh my God, love is real, everybody. <laughs> I'm feeling it right now. Can I say at that point, mate, it didn't just kill the buzz. It absolutely yeah, obliterated it. Oh, yeah, I'll check it. I, I just said yeah, okay. It. Yeah, perfect. Oh. And it does not like being... In, he's a man who does not want to be in oh, debt. Really this is the it. second time he's asked me, I have I paid for the... Ed, come, in, Ed, come in and say... All right, come in. I put in a little extra, so... Oh, all right. right. Oh, you, want to, you, you, want, you, you want your kudos. Is that what I'm going to hear? All right, I'll I check it in a second. points. <laughs> Mate, uh, Mandalorian last night. Have you seen it? The last Mandalorian? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog shit, I did it. <laughs> no, I'm not negative on it like you are, guys. Oh, my God, I'm seeing it in real life. <laughs> I'm seeing it like Ed and Kev like, argue in real life. Have you interviewed? Uh, he, he's sitting this one out. Okay. It'll happen. I'll break him by the end of this convention. Don't worry. So, I... I'm nowhere near as many of you guys. I've mentioned this on my podcast. I am not getting Andored. Which means I'm not... You are. You are. I'm not getting Andor. I'm, I'm going to get massively I'm, Andor. <laughs> what does getting like, Andor okay. mean? Like, I am not approaching everything Star Wars... So it has to be amazing. That has to be like Andor and written really well. No, it doesn't so need it, to be. It, it doesn't have to be amazing. So it just a, needs to be I'm approaching, like half watchable. <laughs> and that was not even remotely watchable. It was. <laughs> I actually enjoyed Great. it. it I enjoyed terrible. it. All right. It had a good time. So I what did we think of Jack Black on that? Uh, he was fine. So you 
know the t- Tenacious Jack D? Jack Black was appallingly you, overacting. Uh, uh, do you know the original Tenacious D record at all? Do you know that? No, re- no, no, no. I made a Tenacious D thing and references. It's, it's falling badly. Chris knew it a little bit, but they got nothing. He didn't even. Knew, I know you were bullshitting me that he didn't know it was in it. No, I know anyway. cock push-ups. I know all about cock push-ups. You, know, all you, you should need have done a few of those in the episode. All, all you need is one. All you need is one. So I treat Mandalorian like a Clone Wars cartoon episode. And it's but we it's did it. We didn't used to. You're right. So now but now do. I do because it's Star and Wars, and I don't want to hate anything Star Wars. Josh about the architecture and the chimneys. Later, later, so later. Yeah, that, that, I, I love London. Okay, the architecture. Anyway, oh my God, look at the chimneys. look at those little chimneys. Um, <laughs> what did you say? No, I, I, have treat, I treat the Mandalorian like a like a cartoon, uh, like Clone Wars, and it it works. Much better in my head. Like it's it's it just it, you gotta you gotta take a step back and not think like oh it's got to be like Andor and written like a fucking like high production movie. You know what I'm saying? Like it's. I oh, know. Do you think they're running out of ideas? No, they're trying to. What I think is they're trying to work up to a story that they have already planned out. Right. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of open threads, and I feel like. They're gonna bring them together with other shows, which is not great for the Mandalorian because you're watching the Mandalorian only. You're fucked because yeah, because yeah. you have to watch everything else to tie it all together. Okay, okay. I'm liking the attitude though, Ed. I have to say. Yeah, yeah. I I like it. I, I mean, first... I didn't hate it. I just a bunch of them I watched. I'm just like, what the hell am I watching? Why am I watching CSI? <laughs> no. Okay. So. Here's the other part. So I watch it like a like a Clone Wars cartoon, but I also watch it like it's a video game. Okay. And he's like on a quest to do this, but he has to do this first. He's got to do the side mission where you're like, well, I've got to do this because otherwise my sword's going to be crap, yes. and I'm not going to be yes. able to get to the yes. next. And and you have to like just be okay with that. Yeah. And once you've convinced yourself to be okay with that, you just sit back and watch it, and it's fine. It's like I, it's enjoyable to me when I do that. That's a comfortable level of acceptance. However, I still agree with everybody that says they don't like it for those reasons. Like, I agree, yes. You're like, I know it's stupid, yeah. but I'm happy that it's enough I'm to I'm still stupid. happy with it. It's Star Wars content. It's Star Wars content. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Ten years know. ago, what the fuck? Like, like we would have loved this. Right now, we would have <laughs> loved know. it. I feel, I don't, I, like... Uh, I don't know. Like I, I'm very like, oh, whatever, man. Star Wars, and it wasn't like it was like so bad. It was unwatchable. It was just kind of like, what is going on? And where are we going here? And why are we on this? It's it's and new. Are, it's new shit. And and sometimes it's hard to like accept the new shit. But like, I love that planet. That whole setting with the planet and everything. With the little like Elon Musk tubes with the. Yeah, I tr- liked it. Didn't that. he try to do that? Like some kind of like. Tube rail <laughs> thing? Like, wasn't he trying to do that a few years he ago? Was, underground, though. Underground. underground. Oh, they were underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, no, this, this. I actually enjoyed the setting and and seeing how cool looking all like the the technology with the opulent citizens with the droids doing all their labor, like, like I whatever. Like the idea like, of like a ex imperial world that have kind of been like. Okay, you guys kind of mucked up. We'll let you live, but we're going to keep an eye on you. You can't have any robot. You can't have any war. Um, I, I thought there was going to be some really weird twist that, like, Jack Black was only marrying Lizzo for the money. Like, there was, you know, that he was a dirt bag, but that didn't even happen. It was like, and, and and that's something like we knowing the Empire and everything. That's like a, we realize yeah. and we can appreciate knowing that Jack Black isn't his character. It's probably a, sh- a, a giant bag of dicks in reality. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. I don't know if you guys... No, no, you're fine. It's the loose, it's the loose celebration <laughs> part. Anything, anything goes. All right, all right. But, like, I, I think we can appreciate it for that. However, face value, people don't see that. So, I, I, I don't know, like... like so, I, you gotta right. take a step back. Yeah, you gotta no, take a step back. All right. So tomorrow celebration first day. What do you? What do you? Oh, you're you're in the celebration. You're in overflow, aren't you? Yeah, Lucasfilm. I'm overflow. Yeah, for the Lucasfilm panel. 
I'm excited to see what happens. We'll see. I, I'm a little bummed that that's the only panel I got. But uh, well, that's better than no panels. That's true. I uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have brought that up. That's right. okay. That's okay. <laughs> We're here now. We're having a good time. All right. I'm gonna get Brittany on here. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, go ahead. You're gonna have a lot of this over the weekend. But all, all right. right looking out. forward to it. Thank you. All right, Brittany Brown, get over here. Hi, Brittany. Hello. How Hello, are you? Brittany. Have you ever seen the movie Basketball? Basketball? Basketball. No, I haven't. It's about the guys from who made South Park made a movie about 15 years ago where they invented a sport, like a comedy. Anyway, there's a joke in it where they go to somebody's, a character's name's Brittany's party, uh-huh. and it's like a girl that they're trying to impress, and they walk and they go, hello, Brittany. <laughs> and like, that was like a running joke that some friends, like me and my mate used to have all the time. It's like, hello, Brittany. Incredible. So now you have a Brittany you can say that too. I know, like I just did. If I had to explain it, so you were just like... What the hell's he doing? Thank you. I mean, uh, before, like, I was used to be a fangirl steal, so he'd call me downtown Brittany Brown because apparently there was, like, some fighter or someone that was, like, downtown something. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm part of a joke. Like, someone knows me because of this. So <laughs> thank you. I'll take it. I'll take yeah, I'll take it. it. Yeah. Um, now, I got you. I'll be, I'll be doing the rounds here. Uh, we're just out at the pub. Looks like you're having a pretty good time hanging out, getting ready for celebration tomorrow. But we've got to talk about this Nando episode. Now, I saw you last night, yeah. and I had seen it, and you hadn't yet. Mm-hmm. And I was a bit like, I don't think you're prepared for what you're going to see. So, did you, after you watched it, you were kind of like, Chapman was right, or like, what's he talking about? I thought it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> really? <laughs> this show knows what it is now. It's camp. This show is camp. It is camp. You're right, actually. It is. They do not care. And, like, now I do not care. So it's a great journey that we're on now, knowing that we just don't care anymore. You think it's just accepted what it is. It's been fighting it. Exactly. It's like, we're high art. We're high sci-fi. It's like, no, you're not. Exactly. And it's interesting because I want to know what the process went into hiring Jack Black and Lizzo to be a married couple in this show like I want to know why and how that happened well it's obviously Bryce Dallas Howard isn't it because she directed it it must be the connect I don't know I don't she's think she's a Hollywood girl like you know her dad's Rod Howard she's a you know famous yeah. actor I in mean, her own right it must be hey I'll make it, it would be, you know they're like well you know we've got the, we've got someone has to play this couple on this planet like who can we get she's like well I know Jack Black <laughs> and I know Lizzo does that seem like a weird pairing? You know, maybe. I don't know. Everyone likes Jack Black. Everyone likes Lizzo. I don't know. I mean, she's a Nepo baby and everything, but maybe it was Filoni. Maybe Filoni really loves Lizzo and Jack Black and, like, wanted to bring that together. Like, I've got a picture here of Jack Black and Lizzo, you know, playing some kind of game where they throw some balls through a thing. And, no, uh, but I, I, we got halfway through it because I didn't know who had directed it. Yeah. And I'm going halfway through, I'm like, this smells of Filoni. <laughs> but then I went, nah, there's no, like, like Filoni characters. Mm-hmm. Like, I still think they'll do an Ahsoka or a Rebels thing. I'm like, nah, he's going to that'll be, he's gonna do that later. So I was kind of getting half of the go, maybe it'll be some person we don't know. I'm like, ah, Bryce Dallas <laughs> Howard? That's a bit weird. Yeah, I was really surprised about that too. But what I thought was most interesting was the the droids and how they brought them back and everything. And then you, you bring in Christopher Lloyd being in charge of the droids. I mean, the whole story about how the people don't want to work anymore, so they're bringing in the droids. Like, I love that so much because... I wish I could live in that world. <laughs> I know. And just the whole story was so funny. And, you know, of course you have, like, the actual story what's going on with Bo-Katan and everything, but this whole side story was the greatest thing to happen to this show because this show is whatever what it, whatever it wants now. Like, this show was so hyped and so big and everyone's been wanting to know what's happening and wanting to know, like, just what the show is going to become but like now we just truly don't know and that's the best part about this that we don't know what's going on can now. they 180 it from this like if next week it's like i don't know like just serious tone just can they 180 the tone to a serious episode next week like moff gideon comes back and kills i don't know someone you care about who do we care well we don't really care about anybody apart from mando and so they killed off bo katan next week and it was a very serious episode, you know, because they're lining her up to be, like, the leader of Mandalore. Yeah. And they pull a 180 and she gets killed. And it's like, well, now what? Like, 
Can they pull that tone back now or have they gone too far? No, they've ruined the show. They've ruined it. I mean, the best way is possible. Because now I love shitty TV shows. Like, that is my favorite thing. Like, a very bad directed, very bad written, and kind of stereotypical, like, you know how the story's going to end. But, I mean, this one, we don't really know how it's going to end, but we know that nothing that we think is Nothing's off the table now. Yeah, nothing's off the table. Like, they can bring in Lady Gaga now. Like, they can bring in Taylor Swift if they want. Like, just the... The opportunity is you, endless. Now, you are a Taylor Swift fan. You saw Taylor recently. Yes. If she was in Star Wars next week, what would you want her to be doing? Do you want her to be a singer or do you want her to be like, no, 180 at Taylor. I want you to be X-Wing pilot or I want you to be Imperial officer being mean to people. Like, What do you want to see? I want her to be that weird off-world person where she's welcome you on an island or on a planet and like you don't know what she's doing kind of like how when Bo-Katan and Mando got to that planet and they're greeted by those two droids like I want Taylor to do that do you want her to be slightly weird like they've given her like half a green face like you want to just like you know Taylor looking like Taylor or do you want to like no no like let's alien her up let's give her something so you know it's her but like give her a tail or give her a freaking I don't know second head or something like two Taylor heads talking to each other or something weird like that she loves cats so let's make her look like oh, a cat have her like when she was the weird cg cat from cats like, yeah that. but we can put a butthole on her yeah same model like yeah. she's like i'm exact i'm the planet of the cats but i've got a bu- i've got a butthole exactly like that would be the best of both worlds there you go nice all right this is good i like i've got i've got some varying opinions tonight good now <laughs> celebration tomorrow you're going into. You're going to try and get into that Lucasfilm panel by hook or by crook. I still think you should. Now we, we, your celebration experience, your holidays, your story to tell. So I'm not going to tell that story. You can do that when you want to. But you do have extra passes for some panels. You should be monetizing those panels to get in. Like I think it's too late. You could use your extra Ahsoka and get into that Lucasfilm stage. Do you need like a broker? Do you need like a Matt Mull to broker a deal? He can take his 10% and get you in there. Yeah, I need to message him. I mean, we're, we're pretty close now. We send each other reels all the time. Oh, and I thought he... it was just me he sent reels to. No! I'd love to see his... I bet you if I saw... Matt, I know you're listening to this. Your Instagram messages where it's like, oh no, he's got like sent the same reel to like nine people. He's just like, oh, hilarious. He's probably got like a tweet deck or some kind of like... You know, AI thing that like does what handles all these socials. <laughs> you know, Matt Mole is actually artificial intelligence. Like he's not actually Matt Mole. He's just like a robot. Yeah. He's like a robot. They just make me a perfect man, and exactly. they've just put like a computer in there. Let me pop up in places and sneak into places. That's what artificial intelligence does. Oh my god. Well, I'm going to get the report from you tomorrow and see how you go if you get into Lucasfilm. Uh, we, I mean, we were even hanging out. It's been awesome. It's been. Uh, we were at the pub. A whole bunch of people turned up. It's been really good. It's a bit chilly, but everybody's got their hats on. Um, it's been great. Yeah, it's been really great. Thank you for the hats. It really kept me warm, this journey I've been on. So right. thank you. Be sure to wear it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And we'll, be, we'll catch up tomorrow. Oh, we will. All right. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, everybody. That's enough. Time to go back to drinking. That's enough vlogging. Bye. Bye.